would you say Adidas has Nike very worried? Is this the new swoosh? Are, are these the new superstars? No, you guys, these are called runners. Runners? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Life of a Sneakerhead, part nine, runner edition. to cover this category. I know, we've gone in depth about Jordans, but it's true that we have not dove into the world of the runners. We brought in sneaker expert, Jazzy. Hello. So Jazzy, you work professionally in the sneaker industry. Are you ready to school us on some runners? I am so ready. All right, we're at Image NYC in Queens, New York. Let's, Let's go. go. Now, I just wanna talk about what we have in our hands right now, but then we're gonna go back mm -hmm. and just kind of break down the whole category of runners real quick. I do know that in my hands right now, are a pair of What the Feig, designed by Ronnie Feig. And uh, Ronnie Feig is the Kith designer, right? Mm -hmm. And he got famous for doing collabos with Asics. And if you guys don't know, Asics is actually a Japanese shoe brand. All right, so these are the Adidas Ultra Boost. These are a really hot shoe. They've been hot for like about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got the Boost technology. And this is like when Kanye put these on, I mean, it was I over. <laughs> <laughs> They were like sitting on the shelf and then Kanye warm and they just went boom. And Jazzy, what do you have in your hand right there? Definitely one of the hottest shoes of 2016, the NMD. And originally, I don't think Adidas thought that it was gonna blow out the water the way that it did, but as we can all see, it has gone crazy. We are gonna go through a brief history of runners and talk about not just the hottest ones that everybody knows right here, we're gonna get into it. And I gotta be honest, me and David, we grew up playing a lot of basketball. We're a lot into the performance basketball. But you know what? Today, I'm ready to learn a lot more. It's not scientific, but I'll try to give you guys a history of runners. How the runner blew up. All right, you guys. So um, the reason that we have to go back and give the history of runners is because it's not clear how the runner movement within sneakers started, to me. It came from Europe. I mean, really the slim fitting clothes, and not okay. only that, but soccer being super popular. Way back in Japan, I remember when they had the DMX Fury oh, and the Air Rift, Zoom Haven. To be really into runners or leading the way, it was like a journey to get there. It was. You went through the basketball sneakers first. Most definitely. So I think sneaker culture came about because of basketball. So that original, sneakerhead crowd kind of went through the Jordan thing, went through the Nike thing, all the retros of all the different sneaker lines, and they're kind of like, I'm bored, I'm growing older, I'm wearing different clothes, I'm getting influences more internationally. Like you said, especially here in New York, it's very close to Europe. There's really just a few main categories of sneakerheads. What would you say? Sure. You know, there's the sneakerheads that only wear basketball shoes, then there's the guys that only wear New Balance, Asics, Sauconies, you know, those are more high fashion or what we call high street. Third category is what is now just the general sneakerhead. And that yes. guy is, he's buying whatever's online. That's the guy that's looking at the Nike calendar, launch calendar. Mm. Well, I, I can see even looking at it from like a functional standpoint, it's like runners are way more comfortable. The functionality of your shoe, it's a real life situation in New York City. We're on our feet a lot in the city. Mainstream, Mainstream runner wise, wise, it started with the Flyknit trainer in 2012. Most definitely. It was the first time something new was introduced at a time that was very oversaturated in the market with basketball shoes. Beginning of 2013, these are popping. Beginning of 2013, these are popping. And then what happens is you start to see a lot of violence in the community, a lot of reselling coming in. The sneaker game itself yeah. just became so crazy. Right. So when we started to phase out, the flux came. This colorway is kind of the one that jumped it off and people went bananas for it. The shoe sold out online everywhere. It was reselling for $350. And it was yeah. this was really the first Adidas on the editorial side that we saw cause okay. a commotion amongst everybody. Why did people jump on these? People jumped on these, I think, because it was a perfect uh, combination shoe for male and female. The price point was perfect. And the way that they feel, the Flex was a new shoe that was okay. introduced. It mm -hmm. was a completely new silhouette. It's a, it was a snazzy shoe. Prints were really hot that year. Um, would you compare top. runners to sort of like the way SBs were? Well, exactly. You really, you really it's had- exactly like that. Yo, you, that's crazy. Yeah. That is great. I didn't, I did yes. all the research and that just clicked in my yes. head. <laughs> I'll, let me just say this. I think the SBs died with the Tiffany's. Yeah. No way. No, it didn't. It, to me, it me. <laughs> Not that it did. Now we got to talk about collaborations. Mm -hmm. Collabos are a huge reason of why runners became popular and, and have remained popular. This is the Adidas EQT. Mm -hmm. This shoe with Pusha T is, this is one of Adidas like most original silhouettes and he just went crazy with it. Fish uh -huh. scales all over it. And... <laughs> Cause all right, so Nike and Adidas are huge. The runner thing, in a way, it really saved Saucony, Asics, and New Balance. Oh, yeah. And Puma. And oh, Puma. And Puma, <laughs> and Puma right? Yeah. We, we do forget about Puma. <laughs> These are the Puma discs. 
Um, to be honest, I've never even tried one of these on, but I know, like, most tell us about comfortable this. Puma. This is actually Ronnie's uh, Puma with kits that he did with kits. And it, I believe it came in two different colorways. This is the salmon one. It is the most comfortable shoe. You dial it here and it tightens up like pump technology. Mm -hmm. Let me just. As a, these are called Sokonis. Yes. That's how you pronounce it. I used to call them Sokonis for mm -hmm. the longest so time. So did I. I. This is like, you know, the little brother that's still trying to get on. Most people like to wear these functionally. Mm. Like, I feel like uh, the former editor of Slam Magazine, I'm Russ. Just gonna Russ say Bensington. Russ Bingston. Yes. This is so Russ Bingston. This is very Russ. New, New Balance, Balance Runners. Runners. For New Balance runners, you would say the 997 model, mm -hmm. the 998, yep. and the 999 are the three most popular New Balance runners. Yes, I would. With New Balance, the, the variation is, is really functional, mm -hmm. as it, which is something that's different um, from like Adidas or something else where the silhouette looks completely mm -hmm. different. This was kind of the first shoe that you would wear to kind of dress up your mm -hmm. outfit. And mm -hmm. that's an idea that did come from Europe as well. So if you like the like. pinnacle ones, really, you gotta know who the grandfather of that whole yeah, thing is. It's, <laughs> it's literally this gray New Balance. The grandfather yeah. shoes. <laughs> I also feel like the people who wear New Balance are in a way defensive because they know a lot of the kids that are into sneakers don't appreciate these. Oh yeah. So like a lot of the kids are looking at other people wear these and being like, ha, what are those funny shoes you got on? Oh, While no, the people like, wearing them are like, ha ha, you don't understand. <laughs> I call these the, you don't know you're too young. Yeah. This is tight. Hi, okay, I, I, you know what? I, you, I gotta you get a pair of these. You know what? Yeah. I, I, Saucony Saucony runners. runners. I'm the least familiar with Saucony. Doesn't they had count. a strong run yeah. in the 90s. They had a, about a one year hardcore run. Yeah. I mean, particularly this Just Blaze. This is directly Just from Blaze. the 90s. Just Blaze. Dun, 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 dun. This is a perfect bridge of what I think like the streets and the runner style. Mm, you know, Just Blaze. The street colorway. It's, so the Shadow 6000. Easily the most popular Saucony silhouette out okay. there. Okay, that's a pretty dope name, Shadow. They also have the Shadow Masters. Yep, Shadow that's kind of like is that like one. Kung Fu what? influence. Oh, I think Shadow so. Master. A6 runners. A6 runners are most defined by the Ronnie Fi collabos. What I'm holding up are Diamond Supply collaborations. Mm -hmm. Now, Diamond Supply, that's from the West Coast. It is, yeah, Nikki and Diamond. It's interesting because I feel like ASICs are not really popular on the West Coast. They're not. It being Diamond with ASICs, it, it made more people in California kind of look at ASICs and it did. Be it like, brought an eye. Them. It definitely brought a spotlight to ASICs and anything, you know, like it's relatable. And then Nikki Diamonds is relatable to that Cali kid, and this is the color. You know, in California, diamond blue is the color. Yeah. Mm. Last, but definitely not least, Adidas, Adidas runners. runners. Killing the game. Shutting the game down right now. Would you say Adidas has Nike very worried? Very. Mm. Would you describe the Yeezy, and right here now, Andrew, I got, I got you have, pairs. you got the turtle doves on, I have the tan ones here, I have the moon rocks here, I have two pairs of pirate black, the newer ones have the heel pad up here, yep. that make it fit a little bit better, so there's no more heel slip. I've actually got the three hottest Adidas in my hands mm -hmm. right now. The newest, one of these actually belongs to our producer, Scott. I took it off his feet. It's still steaming. It's like a steaming bun me in my hand right now. <laughs> Ultra Boost in the triple white, mm -hmm. right? And this is like probably the hottest colorway yes. of this because this is the one the Yeezy wore. Yeah. I, I think it's crazy how the runners kind of infiltrated the high fashion game. Mm -hmm. And I think there's like so many signs that you could point to, whether it's Europe or Japan. I would also say putting technology into high fashion shoes like what Nike did with Kohan back in the day. Mm -hmm. These look like performance running shoes, but they're really fashion shoes now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's make it look as good as it feels. Real quick, I gotta acknowledge the fact that the Yeezy 350 Boost is not a runner. It's not a runner, but it almost is a runner. It's but, almost a runner. And I've seen people um, uncage their Ultra Boosts to make them kind of look like Yeezys where they cut this off. Mm -hmm. People Ultra do all kinds of stuff to make them look like Yeezys. And, and then I heard... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Boys. This is one of the first times that a sneaker company like Adidas responded to the sneaker community because then they went with the uncaged Ultra Boost now. A sneaker companies traditionally like Nike, they listen to the athlete, they design it for the athlete, they push it onto the customers, mm -hmm. which has been great for a while, but obviously there is an upside to listening to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about the NMD. I think this is gonna be the hottest shoe mm -hmm. of 2016, at least for the first half. Yep. I personally yeah. think it looks better than the Ultra Boost. I like them better than, than the Ultra Boost, but I prefer them a sleeker shoe right. like that, you know? Yo, and this is tight. It, to yeah, me, this is such a good shoe, mm -hmm. especially the original colorway they yep. sold out of here. It's super expensive now. Like the price is going what? crazy, almost like borderline Yeezy, yeah. like yep. pushing towards that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like, how did the NMD be like a Yeezy yeah. almost? I, I feel like it has an amazing balance between a classic Adidas look and like all the new tech. This shoe is hot. Talk about the tubular. Yep. Tubular, something not blocky, very smooth, very 
tube like mm -hmm. but i feel like it's not getting the shine that maybe it deserves partially because boost is blowing up yeah ronnie feig from kith obviously has done a cool collab is it based off the y3 quasi it is it's not an official collaboration but it's a inspired silhouette i would say in a way they look more futuristic they do and the whole the whole line it is for that customer that can't afford y3 that doesn't want to wear a boost sole. You know, we got some shoes that you designed, actually. I did, I Woo. did. These are Adidas. These are Adidas. I designed okay. these for Adidas. Um, and so this pair was done in inspiration by Storm from X-Men because I'm a huge nerd. Uh, I don't even know the, you do this, I feel like the stories that you get behind these is so much greater. It is. Yeah. All right, Jazzy, thank you so much for no. breaking down the runner sneakerheads. Uh, we are basketball sneakerheads. You you explained to us the runner sneakerhead world very clearly. A lot of this runner thing has, speaks to a lot of larger shifts in culture. Like you said, the conversation really shifted away from streetwear to like menswear. Exactly. And menswear and streetwear are kind of colliding. That menswear lane, it does go along with runners. After shooting this video, you guys, I consider myself definitely more open-minded to runners now. I'm, we could not have done this video without you. Oh, thank and you, you brought guys. that industry knowledge. Jazzy has been working in the industry, the actual industry, not just reselling. Yeah. You're not just in the sneakers. <laughs> oh, you like, no. you, she got credits to her name. Thank yeah. So yeah. definitely, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much for watching that episode of Life of a Sneakerhead Runners Edition. In the comments below, let us know which one are your favorite runners, your brand, collaboration, whatever it is. Let us know what you think are gonna be the hottest shoes of 2016, even if it's a multiple pairs or whatever they are. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, we out in Queens, New York at Image. Peace! Peace. All right, you guys, thank you so much to Jazzy. Thank Yo, you. Jazzy, thank you so much for helping us out on that runner sneaker video. Most definitely. It was an amazing time here at Image NYC. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I noticed that this is your clothing brand. It is. God bless the fresh. ShopGBTF.com. You can get these real friends hats, and I got another one trapping like a fool. What? Real friends. Real friends. Yo, I see How this, many I see of this. us? Have them. How many of us? <laughs> what, what's your IG? What should they follow? Check you out. Nerd like Jazzy on Instagram or at Jazzy Andretti on the snap or Jazzy Ray R A E on Twitter. Yo, all you young bucks need to learn something from her.